So, good evening everybody. Time to comment on your comments. And I believe we start with Mohammed al -Bunaga. So, exemplary, propriety, having courtesy, acting with obedience, exemplary, a perfect example. And decorum, with propriety, very definitely. And hi there for learn. Could you tell me which one would be more correct in an essay? Students graduate high school, or is it students are graduated from high school? Ha! Huh. I think I would probably say students graduate from high school. So use it in the active to start with, but with this preposition from. So the students have graduated from high school. And in Juan. So, Sting Song propriety popped up immediately in my mind with his modesty propriety can lead to notoriety. Hello and thank you, sir. You always teach us such a proper English. Thank you. I would probably lose the A, such proper English. Yeah, thanks for listening. And Domi, yes, very definitely. Yeah, to flout the law. And high minati flout very definitely. Okay, yes, um, some idioms and phrases. I've given a few, a few uh, playlists here. Flower. I meant sorry. I meant flout. To flout. To breach. To breach flagrantly. To breach the law. To flout um, convention. To flout the law. And my pleasure, VG. And let's see. I made a translation from Portuguese from a Portuguese story into English. Is it good? The snake and the fly, firefly. The snake kept pursuing the firefly, desiring to devour it. One day, tired of fleeing, the firefly stopped and asked the snake, "Do I belong to your food chain?" The snake replied, "No." The firefly said. Did I do you any harm? No, said the snake. Uh, then why do you pursue me, said the firefly. It's because I can't stand seeing you glow, the snake replied. Keep doing your best. Be authentic, even if your glow disturbs predators. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, let's see. Do I belong to your food chain? It works and it's not wrong. I would probably say, am I part of your food chain? But do I belong to your food chain would work. Yeah? Am I, am I part of your uh, food chain? I love the story. I love the, the stories like this with uh, animals talking to each other and doing different things. So, hi Ida. Great to see you. It's a beautiful garden with a lot of leaves. I want to turn over a new leaf. I'm pretty sure this garden is in uh, Sri Lanka. It's a really beautiful place. You'll see I'm sweating, sweating like crazy. And Evelyn. Hi, Evelyn Amelia. Sir, thank you so much for the wonderful work you're doing. It's a pleasure to learn from you. It's my pleasure. Thank you for watching, Evelyn. It's great to have you. And hi, P. Dear teacher, bonjour. Ooh, lots and lots of clouds. Yeah, there's lovely clouds and flowers. Yeah, I like this per this violet colour here. Violet and blue. You look very positive today. That's very good. OK, and dear teacher, this one's got more brown. Maybe it's more down to earth. Maybe this is the earth, me earth meets, the meets the sky. And dear teacher. OK, I'm, I still don't get these, the, the, these yellow ones. Maybe they're flowers. But they look very angular, yeah? Uh, a, a big contrast to these lovely hearts. So, good morning, P. Or good afternoon. It's now good evening, P. Wow. So, hi, AA. Hello, dear teacher and everyone. Have a great day. What's the difference between the following words? Horrifying, horrific and horrendous. OK, something that is horrifying, it horrifies you, it fills you with horror. Yeah, it, it's something that's horrifying, it terrorises you, it makes you actually feel fear. Yeah, there was a horrifying scene in the film where there was bloods um, everywhere. Um, horrific. 
okay horrific we pro we can we can use to mean horrifying but we can also use it more generally um so yeah there was a, a horrific noise meaning a very loud noise yeah there were a horrific number of people yeah i guess you could use horrifying like that as well but i think horrifying is better for something that really does cause fear whereas horrendous horrendous i would use to mean something that's very ugly that building is horrendous yeah he he's got a horrendous hat on for example can we use the adjectives horrific and horrifying interchangeably in the following sentence uh, horrific and horrifying, very probably. I was reading this horrific, horrifying story in the newspaper about animal experimentation. Okay, y yes, you could could interchange them. I think I'd probably like uh, horrifying more, but horrific works perfectly well. By the way, I think horrific sounds more natural than horrifying in this sentence. Um, I, I think they both sound good. I think... Well, I, I think they both work, and I think you could use them interchangeably. Um, the one that's clearly very different is horrendous. It's something very ugly. But very often we use both of these words to talk about something that's um, using it as a, an amplifier. Yeah? Particularly horrific. And Chris. Hi, Chris. How is Australia doing? The parlous state of personal liberty has been greatly aggravated by the Parliament's reaction to co coronavirus. Absolutely. They've used this as an excuse to infringe on our personal liberties more and more. And Mustier. Mustier Tesfe. Okay. I'm, tr I'm endeavouring to crack SAT on Monday. Good English. Thanks, sir. Got it. I'm sure you're going to do really well. And, okay, preposterous, ridiculous, absurd. So, very helpful. I'm glad that was helpful. I'm glad you think so. And, Fluke. Hi, Fluke. He had a propensity for propinquity, for being close to people, which had averse effects on his propriety. Yes, if you get too close to people, they don't like it. That's very good, Fluke. I love it. <laughs> Hi, Ossie. Great to see you, Ossie. No problem. Wonderful to have you watching. And Azam. Hi, Azam. Thank you, sir. Today's lesson was one of my favourites because I study art. You could probably give a better de de definition of Baroque than me. I'm pretty certain of it. So, Fran. Hi. Great to see you, Fran. I hope you're well today. A brilliant idea sprung to my mind and I decided to execute it ASAP, as soon as possible. Okay, yes, yeah, sprung to my mind. The my is optional. You could also say sprung to mind, but sprung to my mind is perfectly good. And Fran again. Nothing jumped to mind, this time you left it out, good, uh, when the boss told me that I have to work on the weekend. And nothing good jumped to mind. He's going to give you a horrible job, I'm sure. And Sir Gelen Baldan, hi Sir Gelen, finally found a good understandable definition of leverage, subscribed right away, keep doing your lessons, loved it. Okay, definitely welcome aboard. I'm very happy with that definition of leverage, because most people don't get the idea. Okay, leverage is, is using a small amount of money to buy a very big asset in uh, finance. Yeah, to leverage, to use something to as a multiplier to get uh, a lot out of very little. Yeah, well, you use a lever and a small force will lift an enormous rock and that's the idea. So, Muhammad Ali Tanis, hi, great to have you, Muhammad. McLovin, hi, McLovin. The church is ornate and Baroque in style. Very good. As somebody commented, this picture is actually Art Nouveau, and they're absolutely right. So, 40, hi, 40, how's the tennis going? A fight, scuffle, fist fight, usually between two people involving the fists. Fisticuffs. There were fisticuffs at the match. There were verbal fisticuffs because they disagreed strongly. Formality four, informal. And, wow, okay, you did not get it. So, AAA got this, and that's good. 
Actually, I got this joke. The immigration officer says occupation. In this context, it means that Putin has decided to occupy London. The verb occupy means to con take control of a place by using the army. There's a better one by Shah Noir uh, further down. Um, I think the immigration officer asked Putin about his job, his occupation. So, occupation, teacher, occupation, uh, journalist. Yeah, but Miss Putin mistook it for the other meaning of occupation to take control control of a place militarily. Yes, that was that's a, a very good explanation. Well done, Shah Noir. Well done, all of you. I love you the way you're talking to each other. I think that's great. And hi there, Nora. I hope your Celta course is going well. I'm certain it is. And Manny, hi Manny. The pun is embodied in the word occupation. Very clever, sir. VG says it made him smile. And Nora. She was caustic about her brother's ideas. Good example. Great English. And hi dear Alex. Oh, sky and clouds. Sky and clouds and a little bit of love. Yeah, that's lovely. And blue sky as well. Yeah, I love it. Very pretty. Thank you, P. And Nora. Hi. Portia, in The Merchant of Venice, deconstructs the patriarchal perception of women as being nothing but Cinderella-like figures by her caustic, scathing remarks to her suitors' choices and mentalities. That's a very good piece of writing, Nora. Be very proud of it. It's very good. Dear teacher, hello. Okay, oh, we've got, ye these look like yellow lions, I think, or maybe they're yellow dogs. Okay, so this represents the uh, uh, fauna around us. And Nora, he kept posing a series of indelicate questions to her, to the extent that she couldn't bear it at any longer, and left the meeting. Very good English, Nora, well done. Hi. I really wish I could pronounce that I knew how, what to call you. It's good for you to suck in fresh shore air. Or it's good for you to suck fresh shore air. Okay, I would say it's good for you to suck in fresh shore air. The reason being um Ah oh no, fresh shore air. It's good for you to suck in fresh shore air. Very definitely. Don't teach your grandmother to suck eggs, or don't teach your grandmother to suck in eggs. No, because notice, to suck eggs, you don't suck it in, you suck the content of the egg out of it. Yeah? So, don't teach your grandmother to suck eggs without the in. But to suck in, it goes all the way inside. Yeah? And that's the, the, the suck in, it's going inside you. I know the grandma's sucking or blowing the the eggs and it's going into her stomach, but suck in in this first one is used with the idea of um, breathing it in, whereas the second one's used in the context of eating. Thank you. Funda, hi. So, hi Funda. I didn't get the gist of it. Good English. Maybe he's with hiding with hiding himself in London. I think Putin lies. He wants to do his job in London. He did not know that he must give a vow before entering before plus ing a foreign country. I'm sorry, Funda. No. So the the customs of the immigration officer says occupation. What is your occupation? Yeah, are you a teacher? Are you a banker? And Putin thinks that uh, he's asking uh, if he's come to occupy the, the country militarily. And he says, no, I haven't come to occupy the country militarily. I've uh, just come for uh, a holiday. And, and that's the idea, Funda. It's in the different meanings of occupation. OK, and Nora. Tactfulness and over-politeness in Celta teaching style can be perceived as misproprieties, I love it, for consuming so many, so many words and you probably need to say, and so much time. Thank you, Nora. OK, hi, P. Good evening, Sir Alexander Henry. Great to have you. OK, yes, he's got this nice uh, turquoise green that I rather like. Yes, this is saying evening is coming on. Yeah, and uh, music. You're probably starting to listen to music. That's great. Great to see you, P. So, 
the choy I think something like that. I might be wrong. I'm pretty sure this is like a CH sound. <laughs> nice shirt. Thank you. Thank you for watching anyway. And Fran, great to see you. Your nice explanations always knock my socks off. Great English, Fran. Love it. I would be in hot water if I knocked my wife up. So to knock up, to make pregnant. Perfectly used. Ah, okay, you're into the Cockney slang now. Tit for, tit for tat, hat. Porkies, porky pies, lies. Hmm, very good. To flout the law, that's absolutely it. Very good, Sean. And let's take a butcher's. A butcher's hook, a look. And Anthony Blunt. Well, this one's a rude one, so uh, you just have to imagine what rhymes with Blunt. Cuckoo. So, cuckoo, Patricia. Great to have you. And, um, P again. I hit him in the north and south, the mouth. Trouble and strife, wife. He's doing bird, bird lime, time, time in prison. Very good. And my old china, my old china plate, mate. <laughs> my old china. Good evening, sir. Thank you. I'm really glad you're 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 getting into these. I I actually really like these. I think they're some of them are real fun. And VG, the officer said occupation in the sense of pastime. Well, pastime is something you do in your free time, and occupation talks about your work. Occupation in the sense of what is your job, yeah? Well, if somebody asks you for your occupation, I guess you would say student. However, what Putin understood was occupation in the sense of military invasion. Very good. The sheer sarcasm in Sir's words. Yes, you both got this. That's good now. Thanks for the laugh. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, I thought this was quite a good joke. Oh, and Patricia got it as well. I love it. Hey, oh, this is subtle. I love it. OK, and we've got lots of uh, thumbs up and uh, a apples for teacher. I love it. OK, I'm glad you got it. Love it, love it. Um, I actually found this joke last week while I was uh, lo l looking for j for jokes, but I'd already made the other one, and this one's clearly much superior. And Pete, it's a pleasure to do English with you, teacher. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That, that makes me uh, very proud. I'm proud to teach you. And Afzal, I see flout is more suitable here. Absolutely Afzal. OK, ooh, this is a multicoloured, fruity, lovey one with lots of hearts. OK, Jane Eyre, very definitely. Yeah, but this is absolute classic English. I'm sorry, it's only the... I think there might actually be the second chapter of Jane Eyre as well, but no more than that. But they they take quite a lot to to actually read. I'm glad I don't do audio books. And you, you clearly you really enjoyed Jane Eyre, P. Love it. OK, VG. Yes, sir. When I said hire some caustic cleaners, I did mean some cleaning workers, not the products. Good, good. Then that was perfectly correct. Do people still use hire to mean rent nowadays? Um, yes, it depends. I think I, I always get the feeling that hire is something that's much more temporary. You rent a house, yeah, but you hire a car. Or maybe you hire um, a machine to do a job. Yeah, you you tool hire. I think hire is normally short term. Yeah, you you can hire a taxi as well. So yes, but hire is normally much more short term thing, whereas rent is much longer term. And Jane Eyre, c'est si bon, si bon, Sir Charles, Sir Alex Charles Henry. Okay, I'm glad you like it. That's wonderful. And Mohammed, great Mr. Music to see you. Integrity, righteousness, straightness, rectitude, probity, honesty, propriety. That's very good. Ah, you've got different translations of Arabic words. Modesty, prudery, decency, propriety, seemliness, squeamishness. Approval, consent, assent, agreement, endorsement, okay. Literature, letters, good manners, propriety, seemliness, urbanity from urbane discipline punctuality propriety precision propriety amenities decorum decency and propriety good 
if you le if you can learn all that mi mr music that's more than enough for one day just keep doing it like that little by little slow but steady wins the race and <laughs> bonsoir teacher how about making more of these like the shorts the, the shorts the putin pun play play short was great much obliged monsieur cher professeur Okay, th this one, these are actually really quite difficult to do, but this is the reality of uh, being on the street in London. And VG, the causticness of some people's comments can be worse than the causticness of chemical substances. Yes, because eventually if you burn your skin with something caustic, it gets better. But maybe caustic comments will stick in your mind for a lot longer. Maybe they attack your self-confidence. The causticness of those products has, because it's the causticness, been corroding the soil. Corroding the soil? Degrading. I would probably say degrading the soil, or has been decomposing the soil. Okay, AK, great to see you, AK. And we can also use it when describing things that are in process, present continuous, for temporary situations, can't we? Like, the reason nobody watches his live streams is that people are generally sleeping when he is live. Yeah, or I'm generally sleeping at 3 p.m. So it's something happening uh, a process at a particular time. Very definitely. Very good, AK. And, ooh, this is a long one. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Wow. So, hello there, VG. Have a great weekend. You too, VG. Very definitely. And, hi there to AK. And hi there. So, we need to give... And hi there to AA. And, okay, you're having a wonderful... Yeah, so how are you living are you living life on the uh, 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 uh to, to the full i think you are so have a great weekend all of you thank you very much for your your kind following and vg says congratulations on 107k subscribers i love this here here from manji here here this is a a fairly formal way of saying i agree i agree with what's just been said and VG, ah, oh, we're now into Ziggurat. Due to the recent excavations on the site, they found a pretty underground Ziggurat. Okay, very definitely. Good English. The princess living in the Ziggurat is said to have died falling off the window. Well, maybe she was standing on the very edge of the window and she fell off. But I would, it's more normal, AK, she fell out of the window. Yeah, because she was inside and she fell out. If it's off, you're on, off, in, out. And that's the idea, AK. <laughs> and let's see, wow, another brilliant one. Researchers have been exploring the ziggurats they found in a forest near our town. For some reason, no one had ever found them before. I am certain Latin America is full of really interesting ar archaeological places and things like that. Just m maybe much of it is covered by enormous trees and things like that. And Manji says, good one, VG. That's great. I agree with you, Manji. I, th I say, VG, your English is improving day by day. I can definitely see the improvement. Yeah? Ah, uh, and Manji, your English is getting better and better each day too. Yes, but Manji already has very, very good English. Okay, so thank you, thank you both of you. It's lovely to have you. What do you think of ziggurattic structures? Good, you're trying to use adjectives. That's great, VG. And, hi P, then to tart up isn't the same. Do you say tart up or doll up? I avoid, avoid using either. I don't really use either of these words much either, but you will hear people y using it. I think to tart up means to make something look better. I tarted up the flat before I s sold it. I tarted up my essay before I um, handed it in. I would say to doll up 
um, I probably wouldn't use this one, is to make yourself look much more elegant. Doll Up, to me, has much more an, an idea of making yourself look good to go out. But perhaps that's... Not, but perhaps now with that beautiful, bouncy, bubbly, baroque repertoire, repertoire of Monsieur le Comte Henri, I might use the term preen. Preen is a much better word. No, to blow a raspberry. <coughs> yeah, this is also slang. Raspberry tart, fart. <coughs> Think about the sound. Okay, a ziggurat, VG, a ziggurat like tart tower has been built in the Villa Industrial One neighbourhood. OK, good English, it'll do fine. And AK. Sir, hello sir, while describing her past in an interview, a politician said, if my dad had been alive, I would not have had to struggle when I should have been studying. Can't I use if he were not alive? OK, the reason she's saying if, I, if my dad had been alive, she's talking about a time in the past. But if he were not alive now, yeah, because this were is a subjunctive talking about the present. Whereas if my dad had been alive, this is to a subjunctive talking about the past. Yeah, so if I were you, I would do this. OK, this is in, in the present tense. So notice these are subjunctives. Yeah, if my dad had been alive, a past subjunctive. If my uh, dad were not alive now is referring to the present because he is, of course, not alive even today. You need to be careful with these subjunctives because the tenses are somewhat different. Or if the Borwell had been were covered covered as an adjective 10 years ago, the child wouldn't have died falling into it. No, if the ball well had been covered, the child wouldn't have died falling into it. Um, if the ball well were covered, children wouldn't fall into it and die. In my opinion, had been describes that the ball well was not covered 10 years ago, but it now it's covered. Maybe it's covered now, maybe it's not. It's just saying if it had been at that moment. Whereas if it were, if it were covered, that's talking about now. And were describes it was not covered. No, You're, you've got this wrong. This is, this was, uh, this, if it were, it's talking about now. It, it describes that it is not covered now. Yeah, and that's the point. OK, uh, uh, you, ne you need to look at these subjunctive tenses. This were is actually what they call an imperfect subjunctive, but it talks about the present and the future. OK, VG, the quarry we discovered yesterday has its mysteries, including some ziggurattic constructions, building. I wouldn't say builds. Some ziggurattic buildings in it, not builds, but the rest works well. And let's see, VG. So, the growth of the market is excellent news, not only for those who are directly linked, connected to the business, such as hotels and transport companies, but also for the other 50 sectors, branches of the economy that are directly involved. Yeah, that works fine. I think as it's 50, I think I might say sector, because normally a branch talks more about, um, so my company has a branch in Rio and a branch in Manaus and uh, a branch in Brasilia. Yeah, I think sectors is better, sectors of the economy. It's part of a, a sentence you wanted to translate. So, use sectors of the economy, sounds better. And slow sunset, high slow sunset. Sir, could you explain what the word elegant means? Eloquent. And, and another request, what's the difference between being de indecisive and undecided? Okay, so somebody who's eloquent speaks in a very 
elegant way. They use very good words. So, for example, Patricia is very eloquent in English. So is Manji. Manji's, both Manji and Patricia are incredibly eloquent. They describe things very well. Yeah. Um, I think eloquent, particularly in speaking, because this loquent from something like loquare in Latin to speak. Yeah. Um, but if somebody's elo eloquent, they, they use very good words to describe things. OK, if you're indecisive, you have a problem making up your mind generally. Yeah, you find it very difficult to decide one thing or another. Whereas undecided means you are undecided in one specific situation. Yeah, um, he's normally a very decisive bloke, but in at this moment he's undecided about what to do. Whereas an indecisive person is always undecided; they can't decide things. Okay, A.K. Hi, hello, sir. Because of my native language, I have a hard time figuring out the position of even. This is a very good question, A.K. Like I did not even have a car. I did not have even a car, or she, she did not talk to her. She did not even talk to her. Talk to even her. In the latter sentence, did not even talk shows that she did not do anything, do anything to her, not even talked, and did not talk even to her shows that she did not talk to anyone, not even her. That's correct. Let's see. And you also ask about only as well. In this, so, with these words even, it depends which word you want to use the even to apply to. You use even to apply to the word um, that comes next. So, I did not even talk to her. I didn't even see her. So, I didn't even talk to her. Even talk. I didn't talk to even her, I didn't talk to anybody, and not her as well. And the same with only. I only talked to her, I didn't do anything else. Yeah, I only talked to her, we didn't go round the back and start kissing. I talked to only her, I didn't talk to anyone else. They're, they're different, the meaning is different. I only talked to her, I didn't do anything more than that, more than talk. I talked to only her, I didn't talk to anyone else. So, in this case, only talked, n I didn't do any other verb. Only her, not anyone else. And the same with even. It depends on the where, what you want it to mean. Um, I only have five minutes. Only have, I don't have any more. I have only five minutes. So, not more than five. Um, I have five minutes only, if you put it at the end, it refers to the whole thing in brackets, like a multiplier. Have some practice with this, try and make some sentences with it, because the only and even, these um, adverbs change the meaning. And Patricia, hi Patricia, great to see you. So, good evening teacher. You are closer to heaven, to the gods and the goddesses, the Venus de Milo in the Louvre and the summit, pinnacle of the Eiffel Tower. Love the video. The top of the dung heap. Ha ha. I had a ziggurattic laugh. It's true. You watch the, you watch the, big, the biggest cockerel loves the highest point in the dung heap. I chuckled ziggurattically. <laughs> Have a great ziggurattic weekend. Thank you very much, P. Oh, this looks very positive. It says night is coming. And AA. I've fallen in love with the way you write, Patricia. Yes, AA. She writes fantastically. Yeah, I think I, I'm not sure I could write like her. Yeah, um, speaking and explaining things is more my thing. Patricia, it seems to me your English skills cast a spell on people. That's that's the point, AA. That's why her writing's so good. Utterly mesmerizing. Yes. By the way, are you interested in classical music, Patricia? She loves it. I know it. Who's your favorite composer? Good AA. Did you say fallen in love with the way I write? Oh my God, you don't know what you're in for. 
English skills? Are you suggesting the possibility of others? Ooh, swoon, ooh, swoon. Hey, that that's the teacher's brock word again. Swoon and double swoon. Oh, I love this double swoon. Now I said swoon and double swoon, not swoon and double entendre. <laughs> Okay, double entendre, double meaning. Enjoy your weekend, my friend. The same to both of you. It's lovely to have you both. And P again. Bonsoir, good evening. Have a lovely weekend. The same to you. And AAA says, have a lovely weekend too, Patricia. That's great. And VG as well has joined in. That's brilliant. So have a great weekend, all of you. Okay, VG. So what's the difference between the verbs to corrode to erode, to fret, to weather, to eat into, to eat away, to wear away, and to wear down. Okay, corrode is a chemical reaction. Let's see, if you, see, if you leave a piece of copper outside, it goes greeny, a greeny bluish colour. That is corrosion. It's oxidation. Rust is corrosion. That the um, a, a metal or something is being corroded. It's reacting chemically with the thing and, part, and parts of it are disappearing. To erode. Okay, to erode is normally the action of, of water or wind. Yeah, the um, the wind has eroded the surface of the building. The water has eroded this part of the cliff. So it's to wear away with the action of water or wind. To fret. To fret is to move backwards and forwards. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know, my shoes are fretting against my uh, foot. So it's, this has got the idea of to... Um, to wear down by rubbing, to weather. Okay, weather is is like to erode because of the wind, because of the rain, because of the, the weather, and that's the weather. To eat into. So I think the acid is eating into the surface. I think eat into is a type of corrosion. You use hydrofluoric acid to etch glass. Remember that word etch? Okay, it eats into it. Yeah. Um, he poured a caustic uh, thing on his uh, skin and it's eating into it. It's rotting it away. It's decomposing it. Okay, um, to in eat into and eat away. I think these two are the same. Um, yeah, the <laughs> uh, Maybe the uh, woodworm, these little insects, are eating away the wood. Yeah, it's like a, a little insect's eating it, just going, taking it piece by piece. Okay, to wear away and to wear down. Okay, to wear away is by use. So, for example, if you use your shoe, if you walk a lot, the heel of your shoe, it wears away. It comes off. Yeah, um... The surface of this has worn away, so through use and wear, it has um, uh, disappeared. Yeah, the lettering has worn away, and to wear down is the same, but to get smaller. So yeah, the uh, heels are worn down. Yeah, I wore down his resistance. There you go. And Manny, hi Manny, from the vantage point of the towering ziggurat, you can see the entire city. Love it. And to vanish, disappear, to be wiped off from the face of the earth is said in exactly the same way in my language. I thought we were the only ones to use this idiom. Yeah, to vanish from the face of the earth, to disappear from the face of the earth, to be wiped off the face of the earth, to be wiped from the face of the earth. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, very definitely, VG. And, okay, we, ha, hi, my, my Yefi. So, great to have you. We have those things in Iran, in, 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 in ancient places. 
Okay, yes, you also, you also though have tells as well, where clearly there was old habitation. I would love to visit Iran. I think it would be very interesting. Yeah, I would also like to go to Ur, which is in Iraq, and uh, yes, see the Tigris-Euphrates Valley. Go to Babylon as well. Okay, yeah. Huh. Okay, so let's see. VG, thank you for teaching me a new verb, broach. To broach a subject is also a type of metalwork tool. So, broach, but okay. Ha, huh. O O C H is an ornament. To broach, to bring up, mention, talk about a sensitive or difficult subject. To pierce or puncture a container in order to take liquid out of it. Yeah, they broached the barrel of beer. Should we broach that matter now or should we broach another cask of wine? I think both things. We broach the cask of wine while we uh, broach that matter. Notice B-R-O-O-C-H is, is a piece of jewellery that you wear. The same sound but different spelling. And Manneking. Hi Manneking. Your propriety is important when you're out and about. Definitely. She behaves with propriety when she's in public. Good. His propriety was not great at the event. Good English, Manneking. And the lovely Manji. Those who built such colossal structures like ziggurats were undoubtedly brilliant engineers and architects. Their belief that ziggurats acted as conduits for, I would say, conduits of communication with God or with the gods doesn't make any sense to me, though. Well, I can understand why they think that, because the gods live in in the sky, and therefore the, the higher up you are, the closer you are to the sky. I think that's just an excuse. Um, I think uh, in the animal world, the higher up you are, the more important you are, and, and, and I think that's the, the idea of it. So, an albatross around my neck. Hi, Sandra. Great to have you. Thanks. I've wondered this for a while. I have seen a glimpse of a documentary where an albatross was so intent on trying to grab a penguin chick, the parents huddled around the youngster. The albatross was zooming around their circle so fast. It was very shocking to see the way the alba was able to do that, considering its size. OK, very good English, yeah. So an albatross around my neck, a problem that you uh, have to carry around. And Lukash, hi Lukash. I hope that a special place is prepared in hell for him. OK, Lukash, very good. And urban legends, anecdotes, absolutely, Mohammed. And VG, the difference between pierce, puncture, prick, perforated, poke through, penetrate, mainly the first three. So to pierce, to go from one side to the other, you pierce your ear, you have a piercing through your lip or a piercing through your tongue. So to pierce is to go through, but, it, but just to normally to make a, a, a very small hole, yeah? To puncture, if something's inflated, a balloon, and then I get a pin, to puncture something that's got air pressure inside. Um, I punctured the tire of my car. And to prick, so is to get something sharp and to poke it in. So uh, I pricked myself with the thorn of a rose. Yeah, if I prick the balloon, I will puncture it. Yeah, um, and I pierced the skin. Yeah, when I pricked myself with the rose. So to make a hot to pierce and make a hole from the outside. Um, to perforate is like to pierce, probably bigger. I think pierce is a small hole, whereas perforate can be bigger. The well perforated to a depth of uh, 200 meters. To poke through, so normally to poke is something with a bigger end. Um, I poked my finger through the piece of paper. Yeah, um, poke is something bigger and rounder because if you poke, it's not generally not sharp. And to penetrate just means to go inside, to go from the outside to get into the inside. So the oil penetrated the surface of the wood to enter through the surface and get inside. Okay, and P, hi P. 
I wait with adolescent impatience for the comments to be hearted. <laughs> I would love a ziggurat of hearts. It's the only edifice that withstands the test of time. That's lovely, P. I love it. And Nitu. Greediness has man transmogrified him into a changed man. Good sentence. Everyone in the vicinity is shocked by his sudden change in personality. One who was known to be down to earth is now known to be a ziggurat. Ziggurat-tick, greedy and materialistic man. Ziggurat's the noun. Zigguratic is the um, adjective. Zigguratic makes me think of the Trump Tower. So, cupula, curved shaped, minaret, a spire. Okay, a spire. So, a minaret of a, of a mosque. The spire could be of a mosque as well, a turret of a castle, a belfry is where you've got a bell at the top, particularly of a church, and campanile, that's a French word, talking about the bel belfry or the bell tower. Love it, Mr. Music. And Mr. Music again, I'm proud that I'm Egyptian from the builders of the pyramids, and my dear teacher said that the pyramid is a, the pyramid, it is a ziggurat, absolutely. Yeah, these are enormous ziggurats. Yeah, and very early. I, I think Egyptian history is incredibly interesting because uh, th this is our early world. They were incredibly sophisticated people who knew all sorts of incredible things. Okay, so let's see. Wow, we've got a load more here. And... Uh, let's see. Wow. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Ha. And VG says the only problem is that slaves built them. Ha. Yes, it's true as well. So, what does flout mean? So, hi, hi, hieu. So, hieu. I would imagine you're in Vietnam or in Cambodia. Um, to flout means to flagrantly break the law, to disregard convention, to disregard the law. I've definitely got a video on flout versus flaunt, and I will link that to this question tomorrow. Here. Cold war better than nuclear. Cold war better than nuclear. So that looks like Vasily, I think. Um... I'm sorry I don't get it, Vasily. Maybe someone will help me. But thank you for watching. And Patricia. Good evening, Alex. I have to catch up with tons of live streams, videos and other stuff to be in the loop. But the problem is I produce something at such a trem things at such a tremendous rate. And there's already so much there. Ah, it, much in the... Uh, thing. Look at this. Just look at this for a second. This is Patricia and this photo is Lukash. And if you look at this, this is Victor Gabriel and this is Mohamed Albonaga. <laughs> I find this very, very funny. Yeah, it just shows their problems with it. Thanks for hearing me, sir. My pleasure. And yeah, Netflix, exactly. Netflix. You got it, mystery. Okay, and vibes. Suffice it to say, isn't it also the imperative besides the present subjunctive? Suffice it to say. I would say it's a, it, it, it's a present subjunctive. Suffice it to say. Because the, is it an order? I think maybe it's a it, it it also I think it also works as uh, there as an imperative because the present subjunctive and the imperative are very close together we often use use them for the same purpose okay light english collocations for learn hi for learn great to see you hello sir could you tell me if light is used commonly more in which case Leave a light on, leave the lights off. And you explained lights have gone. And can I use phrasal verbs, the lights have gone off, gone out? Yes, you can. The lights have gone, the lights have gone off, the lights have gone out. Leave the lights off. Yeah, leave a light on. Yeah, all of these are fine. They work very well. 
and take W or tacky W. Sir, is being in the ivory tower the same as being in a ziggurat? That's a good question. Um, if you're in an ivory tower, you live above everyone. You live uh, and you, you have no idea of what <laughs> normal people are thinking. Um, I guess if you're in, in a ziggurat, um, yes, you live in a different world. I, I would, I, I, I don't think I would use being in a ziggurat as, as, a, as a direct, um, synonym for being in an ivory tower. Yeah. I, I think a ziggurat, a very tall building, a symbol of power, whereas being in, in an ivory tower talks about somebody's lifestyle. Yeah, it says they live a lifestyle and they have no idea of what the common people are doing. Yeah. And P, stopgap. Hi, P. If you accumulate too many stopgap gap measures, your ziggurat will come crumbling down. OK, so notice, Taki. I love the way she's used ziggurat here. Your large edifice, your large structure. Yeah, and using a ziggurat, a large structure symbolizing power. You see, the ziggurat's a symbol of power. Yeah, whereas the ivory tower is saying is giving the idea of living separate from people. For learn, could you tell me what would differ between prepositions after apply? Apply for or to a university? Let's see. To apply for a university, to apply to a university. I think to is probably better but apply for a place at a university yeah but to apply for a job I would apply for a job I would apply to the company for the position yeah um, so apply to this job you could but I think the two is talking about the organization and the four is the thing or, or advertised also, could you tell me if these three would mean the same? He asked me how I was. He asked me how I had been. He asked me how I have been. The first one is different because it denotes that particular moment. But in he asked me how I have been, it's general from the past to, to now. So let's see. He asked me how, how I was. OK, yes. He asked me how I have been from the past to now. He asked me how I had been. Uh, so, uh, let's see. I think the meaning of, of he asked me how I had been could be interpreted with the same meaning as the other two. But technically and strictly, he asked me how I had been last week. Yeah? In a period of past time. But maybe from the past up to then yeah he asked me how I have been okay he asked me how I am he asked me how I have been from the past up until now he asked me how I had been from the past up until the point he asked me he asked me how I was how I am now uh, I, I think I could inter I would interpret all three as the same meaning, but the had been technically is talking about a, a period of time prior to him asking me. Good question. I like that for learn. And Ronan, thank you, Alex, and congrats on 107. And let's see, today's the 18th, 12, 12 eighths and 96. Yes, maybe 108 by the end of March, maybe for April Fool's Day as well. So let's just refresh. If you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you soon unless there are more comments here. So we just got to be patient for a second. I bet there'll be a couple. And I don't give a fig about sports. Good English. Yeah, the Josh sings. So, hi Josh, great to have you. Yeah, I don't give a fig about football, for example. Yeah, I really don't care about it. So, I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.